What's up, I'm Shift. This was Rage Worthy for the final day of week number four. North America would have their mitch match with having Envy playing up against G2 first, and Splice would take on SK second. This day meant a lot for both sets, really. When you take a look at it, Envy could secure themselves the number one seed in NA. G2 would have to try to fight their way back to try to battle for that number one spot if they so desired it. Then SK and Splice meant a lot for Splice if they wanted that third spot. Well, the outcomes were rather convincing. Starting the day off with Envy versus G2. Envy absolutely steamrolled G2. It was a 4-2, 4-0, 4-2. in a row, a 3-0 set for Envy, who are looking like they are going to be a major world championship ender. Now, for G2, what went wrong? It tried to mix it up a little bit. The solo pip healing on Jaguar Falls was laughable at best. Then beyond that, they tried pulling out a couple of other random things. Frog Isle with the Willow didn't really work out so well with them. And then as well, they worked out the uh, Ceres on Ice Mines, which with the triple tank, in theory, it sounded great, but it was a first pick Willow. So it was pretty uh, easy rolling once Cauterize got online plus Dead Zone. So that would be the four twos. In the middle was the four zero. Oh. Envy look great. Uh, they absolutely do. They're making everything work out for the front line. It doesn't matter what it is that they're playing. But beyond that, the damage dealers really again that synergy between Rock Monkey and Random Noob has really looked top notch. Definitely on the same level as your traditional number one in Navi. I know a lot of people in chat today were already saying, well, it's going to be a Navi versus Envy Grand Finals. A lot can happen, but right now I would be prone to agree with that statement, depending based on what we've seen so far from the number two seeds out of North America and Europe. And then the second set of the day was big for Splice. As you remember, Renegades did beat SK the other day, but it was a five game set. Splice, if they could find a way to beat SK in relatively easy fashion, the map differential would have vastly been in their favor. They would just have to beat Renegades, but that was not the case today. They would lose in four games. SK coming out, I won't say strong, just better than Splice, mostly thanks to Payan on Drogos. And I have to sing praises to Payan. That kid has looked great since coming into the PPL. Definitely been my standout performer throughout this split, without a doubt. There's really nobody else that comes all that close as far as newcomers to the scene. And then, as you take a look at Splice, Ricotta looked good, but he was getting really overly aggressive, especially on that Bright Marsh game when he was playing Cassie. A lot of times he was just overextended. And the Torvald that was picked up was holding on to his, his shield way too long. There were times where when we were watching the Torvald, that cooldown was ready to go. Ready to throw throw it on Samba. Like that survivability is so huge. I don't think they really use the Torvald to the best of their ability. Also, shout outs to Aspect for not dying all that often. He's really looked nice on the support, but this was essentially a, a bruising battle between two teams that just don't look like they're anywhere near the top three at this point in time. I wouldn't be surprised to see either of these teams, if not both of these teams, get upset by a PGS team just based on the explosiveness that we've seen from some of the North American PGS teams, let alone some of the European PGS teams. We're not even going to mention all the other international teams that will be at the qualifying stage, which these two teams are going to have to go up against at some point in time, very likely. It's not just PPL. It's not just North America. You have to face everybody. And right now, these two teams are not looking all that strong at the moment. So as we go forward and we finish out the week, yes, G2, they are still going to pretty much lock in the number two seed, but Envy definitively has locked in the number one seed. Meanwhile, in Europe, you did see that switch between Fnatic and NIP for that second, third spot. Navi, of course, sitting undefeated at the top. We've got one more week of gameplay. Bomb King should be back. And I know I've been singing the praises of Bomb King a lot lately and how he's been an influential champion. But the fact of the matter is, he's not played all that much. It's just the simple aspect that he is influential when it comes down to when he is played. He's played in limited roles against limited comps on limited maps. But you're not going to be seeing triple frontline anymore. You're not going to be seeing these double off tanks as much just because they do get blown up. You're not going to be seeing Ruckus as much because he does get blown up a lot by Bomb King. Speaking of counters... How about this Fernando and Drogos conversation that opened up today? Everyone's saying, especially that last draft from Splice, first picking Kinesa on Ascension Peak, which would allow SK to grab what you would assume 
be the Drogos Anara. They go Drogos Fernando, and it nearly backfires on them. They leave Anara over to Splice, and the conversation is, well, you take Fernando when you have Drogos so they don't counter each other. Here's a little quick tip for you, a little quick statistic. Drogos, when playing up against Fernando, just in week four, is 4-0. Four oh. Let that one sit with you. We're going to hit you with more stats next week as we get into week number five, as a lot of things we'll be riding on, of course, where these teams end up when they go into the seeding, let alone not only for HRX, but for the qualifying stage. I've been shipped. That's what went great worthy. Catch you next time. Bye.